everybody, I'm Lou the Rocker Rich. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to those of you who've been here before. I'm going to be talking today about the kind of the, the card, oracle card practice that I have on my altar that I use. Um, and it's something that is kind of like a, a practice and like a, like a spiritual devotional type practice that I do. And I want to just talk about it and maybe give you guys some inspiration and maybe what you can do. It's not that, you know, anybody has to do this or maybe you're just curious, like what these cards are on my altar over here. Um, and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that and just talk a little bit about my personal practice with Oracle cards. So I have here, I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, I have five different cards on my altar and what I have, and I'm going to talk through each of them, but I have here a card for the year. I have the card for the lunar cycle. So what, um, lunar month we're in, I have a Sabbath card, um, a card of the month, and then I have the daily card in the middle. So I'm going to start first with talking about the yearly cards. So this is my card for the year. I have Bast and the word is play. So what I do on New Year's morning every year, and I've done this since 2016 or so, I think, maybe even before that, um, I have a bunch of different like God and Goddess type decks that I've collected over the years. And so I have six of them that I use pretty frequently. And I will roll a dice. I have a number assigned to each deck and I'll roll a dice to see what deck I should pull from. So this one came from uh, deck number four, which is the uh, Goddess and Sirens Oracle. So I knew I was like, okay, I mean, this is the deck I'm using. And then I shuffle until one pops out. And so what popped out for me this year was Bast or sometimes called Bastet and the word is play. So this gives me like my word of the year. You may have heard people talk about the word of the year. Lots of people will just, they'll pick one themselves, but I kind of like to let the universe pick one for me. And so my word this year is play. And I was really happy to see this because obviously that is like a pretty positive word. And it's reminding me to things like to lighten up, to have more fun, to um, be more creative. And so this is, you know, the god or goddess that I work with for the year, particularly on Sabbaths, I will honor this particular, whichever one came out, um, god or goddess. I've had, you know, I had one year I had Mars and it was like warrior. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to be fighting for people this year. <laughs> but it was about like standing up for yourself because sometimes it comes out in ways that you didn't quite expect. Um, I worked with Quan Yin, whose word was compassion. Um, I pulled 2020. I pulled uh, Maui and Adventure. Um, and I was like, oh, am I going to travel to something this year? But it was an adventure that I did not see coming. So um, as we all did, you know. So playfulness, I think, is really important for me uh, this year. But this is how like, I kind of pick my word for the year. This is what I'll put in my like, day planner as my word for the year. And kind of like a reminder that this is the focus for the year and the focus for Sabbath. Now, the next uh, card that I have I talked about is for the lunar cycle. So each new moon, I will pick a, uh, a card. And then that also becomes the god or goddess that we work with the following month in my coven. So it kind of, um, it's not just pulling it for me, I'm also pulling it for uh, my Patreon coven as well. And look at this. So this time I got, I rolled the dice and I got, um, I got number one, which is the goddess oracle. And look what I got. Bast and play. I think she really wants to talk to me and she really wants to play, right? She really wants me to be playful. So I think it's really funny because um, the reason I use multiple decks is because there's some that are just goddess. I have one that's just God. I have one that's like a mix and I like to have a mix of things and also because there's certain gods or goddesses that will appear in a lot of the decks, but authors will have a slightly different take on them. But I think it's funny that this is a, a different deck, but it has the same keyword here. So obviously this, this past month, it's really been telling me that this is something that I need to do and I need to work on, right? So it gives me a focus for that lunar cycle as to what kind of energies I'm going to be working with for that lunar cycle, what I need to work on, um, you know, maybe what I need to do in my sort of more my magical practice, like new moon and full moon rituals, that kind of thing. So that's um, same idea with the lunar card. It's just it is drawn on the new moon as opposed to the year card, which is always like the morning of January 1st. 
So then I also have a Sabbath card. Now the Sabbath card changes depending on the Sabbath. And this is something that I've been just doing recently. It's relatively new. I'm going to see, I'm going to try for a year and kind of see how it goes. So this is my card for in bulk. Um, as I'm filming this, um, I'm going to be pulling a new card tomorrow because tomorrow is Ostara. But today uh, it is Sunday, March 19th. So we're not there yet. But tomorrow I'll be pulling a different card and I'll talk about that in a sec. But um, on in bulk, I decided I was going to pick a crystal to work with uh, for the year. And so I have two different crystal decks. So I, again, signed a number, rolled the dice, and then um, let a card pop out. And what I got was uh, black tourmaline, and the message is purification. So black tourmaline is a really protective uh, type of crystal. So uh, it's one of my favorite crystals. So I was really happy to like pull this. I was like, oh, I love black tourmaline. So I have like a piece of black tourmaline like on my dresser upstairs. And that's what I'm kind of like working with. And it, um, and then that becomes kind of like my crystal for the year. And this is my message for the Sabbath season. So this was my message for between in bulk and um, spring equinox. And it's really about like letting go and allowing things to, allowing things to die, allowing things that don't work for you anymore to go. Um, and so it was really relevant um, for some of the things that, you know, I was going through, especially at the beginning of February. So, you know, this is going to be the crystal I'm working with. Now for Ostara, I'm going to be pulling a, um, I'm going to be pulling a plant card. So again, I have a tree deck and I have the botanical oracle um, and I'm going to pull a card from there as sort of the plant energy that I'm going to be working for, for till the next, um, spring equinox. So we'll see what comes up. And it's also like a message as well for that Sabbath season until, until May, until Beltane, what I, energies I kind of need to work with and what I need to work on. Um, uh, my plan is, and I, again, I, I started doing this kind of halfway through last year is, Beltane, I'm going to pull an animal card from my animal decks. And then for Litha or Summer Solstice, I pull a fairy card from my fairy decks. And then for um, Lunasa, I have a couple of spirit guides decks, like spirit, like sort of like ascended master type decks. And then uh, for Fall Equinox, I have a couple of decks I work with that I associate with ancestry. So pulling an ancestor card. And then I have my Fallen Angels card where I'm going to pull a Fallen Angel for Samhain. For, um, what was it? Winter of Solstice. Um, I pull an angel card and this year I pulled Archangel Michael and saying you were safe and protected. So that's the Archangel that I'm working with. So it's kind of like each Sabbath has its own flavor and own energy that I'm working with. And so it not only gives me a message for that season, but it also is about what energies I'm working with for that particular cycle. So that's what I do with my Sabbath cards. Now for the monthly card, this is just like a card I pick, pick on the first month and it has more to do with kind of like my creative projects that I'm working on or, um, you know, with my, with my business and stuff. And so I use the sacred creator, sacred creators Oracle. Oh, get that out of my mouth. And I have here, um, this one for March is light in the unexpected. And so this gives me kind of like a creative focus to work on for that particular month. So I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. I like this because it, um, these, these cards are particularly gear, geared towards if you have like a creative or spiritual type business. And so I wanted something that was like really focused on sort of more creative type things. So that's why I picked this one. Now for my yearly, um, or not my yearly, pardon me, Ooh. for my daily deck, my daily deck that I use. Well, I've been using different ones. So last year, I'm just going to move things aside here if I can. Uh, where is it? Um, last year I was using the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. Let's see if we can get it out. There we go. I was using the Wisdom of the Oracle deck by Colette Baron Reed. I find this is really nice for daily draw type readings. I really love these cards. Um, I think they have just some really nice guidance. They have both um, right side up and upside down uh, meanings. So upright and reverse meanings. And I really like it. And there's lots of cards in this deck. So there's lots to choose from. And then I thought for the for 2023, I would switch it up a bit and I was using the Enchanted Map Oracle, which is, you know, very similar. It's really great for like, just like day-to-day -day type of inspiration and guidance and things like that. So I was using that. But I got in the mail the other day, 
and I have opened it. So I will do, I'm going to do a review video rather than a walkthrough video. Like once I've worked with it, I got her new dream weavers Oracle. Now I really like Colette Baron Reed's decks for sort of like that day to day little message. So I just got this like this week. Um, and so I just started working with this. So I can't really say too much about how well it's going. Um, I seems like I pulled one actually I just started using it like on Friday pulling one for the day and then Saturday and then uh, today I pulled one and Friday and Saturday both seemed really accurate so we'll see how it goes this is kind of like a trial I'm gonna do it for a little while see what I think I might end up going back to the enchanted map or something else but I'm gonna try it for now because the other decks have been really great with day-to-day -day kind of messages um, we'll see. We'll see how this one does. The artwork on this one's very different than the other two. Just as a heads up, if you're expecting the artwork of, and I'm gonna pronounce her name wrong, uh, is it uh, Jeannie Della Gradia? I've gotta pronounce it wrong. Anyway, it's a very different artist that is doing the work in this deck. Um, but I'm gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. But I allow myself like I'll usually try to pick like a daily draw deck for the year. I'll switch it up just so it doesn't get kind of stale each year. But we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try the dream weavers and see how it goes for my daily draw. And then I usually write the the like in my day planner. I have a little space where I'll write the card for the day at the top of the top of the date. So that is what I do with my cards on my on my altar. I've done different things different times, but this is something that I'm trying for this year as far as like this particular arrangement. Do you have cards on your altar? Do you have like a certain, you know, do you have certain cards for Sabbaths? Do you have certain cards for lunar cycles or for full moon or what or a weekly card? I actually do have a weekly card, but it's not here. It's upstairs in my dresser. I have um, a deck of affirmation cards and what I do is I will pull an affirmation card at the beginning of each week, usually on Sunday night for the rest of the week um, as an affirmation that I'm working with. And right now I'm using Louise Hayes Power Thought Cards is the ones I'm using for spring. I usually like have like a spring deck and a summer deck and you know I love I love doing things seasonally you may have noticed. Um, so let me know what you use and what your thoughts are about this. I would love to hear. Let me know. Again, thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are the best and are helping me to like keep afloat and continue to do these things. So thank you so much. You are amazing. Um, and if you're interested, you can of course come and check out my Patreon links down below. Also, if you want a reading and check out the Etsy shop, but just thank you for watching and thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, peace and love. Thank you.